and other names to reckon with in the bloody pages of Arizona's history. By 1903, the Red Man had been forced to bow to the inevitable progress of the land. They were living on reservations, given to them under treaty with the United States. But a few short years ago, the Red and White Man were locked in a bitter struggle for survival. With time, drifting sands had buried the battle-scarred remains of a covered wagon train. Ghosts of the past and the blood-red memories. The time had not buried all of the hate in man's heart. Some men didn't forget. But worse, they wouldn't let other men forget. about a mile and a half outside of town. It's the first house, you can't miss it. Beyond me, how Les ever got stuck in a hole like this. Well, Les has done a lot to help settle this town. He's one of the leading citizens. Well, if I know Les and he's got anything to say about it, he's gonna run every Indian right out of town. Well, why do you say that? Well, what are they good for? They're good farmers. They help feed the territory. So stick them out on some land and let them farm. But don't let them come in and take over the town. Well, they come into town to buy supplies the same as anybody. Their money is as good as the next man's. You any kin to Les? Yeah, brother. My name's Brad uh, Harrison. How long since you seen him? Oh, I don't know. Four or five years maybe. Well, Les is married now. Married? You don't say. And I'd bite down on my tongue before I talk too much about redskins around your brother. Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, best you find that out for yourself. As long as you're riding out to Les's place, tell him there's been a meeting called tonight. Citizens Committee. He'll know what it's all about. And uh, just a few words of advice, Mr. Harrison. If white ruin isn't to your liking, I'd just ride on. Now I got business to tend to. Brad! <laughs> well, it's been a long time, Les. More time I care to think about. How long are you going to be around? Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it too much. Say, I want you to meet somebody. What name, us? Come on out here. We got company in hurry. I lost track of you a few years back. Didn't know where to write to. Well, I've been around the Army, different places. We'll talk about that later. Oh, before I forget, some ranger in town asked me to remind you about a meeting tonight. Oh, yeah, thanks. Now, the way he talked, you're the tall hog at the trough here. <laughs> Bet you thought all that talk about my big brother Brad was just talk. Well, here he is in the flesh. Brad, this is my wife, Wanema. I'm so glad to know you. You talk pretty good English for an Indian. I was educated in your schools, Mr. Harrison. Got yourself a pretty little squaw here, Tom. There's another plate for supper, Wanema. I'll come a long way to see you, boy. I never expected to find my brother a squaw man. My name is my wife. Our father and our uncle was killed by the Indians. That happened 25 years ago. You've changed, boy. The trouble with you is you haven't. That's for sure. Brad, you're welcome here as long as you want to stay. Just remember this. I love my name, huh? You try to hurt her. Oh, now, come on, boy. It ain't my mind to hurt anybody. But that don't mean I ain't gonna try to pound some sense into that head of yours. 
I ain't never met an Indian yet that you can trust. I married one. What's your price, Indian? I don't know what you mean. Come on, you don't have to put on a knack with me. I ain't never met an Indian yet that couldn't be bought. Now, how much do you want to go back to your tribe and forget all about less? When an Indian loves Mr. Harrison, her love runs deep. And when she learns to hate, that hate never dies. So be careful, Mr. Harrison. Don't you threaten me. Maybe there's a reason. Let's keep you around here. Let's see a little bit of that. Indian loving. How's it feel to be kissed by a real loving man, huh? Makes me ashamed that my husband has a brother like you. Supposing I was to tell unless you try to make love to me. What do you think he'd feel about that? Why don't you tell him? And find out for yourself. Graduated. You are now looking at a full-fledged doctor. Mm. I'm so proud of you. And our people will be proud of you, too. Now they can have the medical care they need and deserve. What about you, Wainima? You left the tribe to marry Les Harrison and find a better life. Have you found it? I found happiness I never dreamed of. Yes, I believe you have. My husband will want to meet you. He'll want to meet my childhood friend. Oh, Lodi. I'm so proud of you. So very proud. Very pretty. Very pretty indeed. Lodis is an old friend of mine. Well, sure he is. Any fool can tell that in the way you two are carrying on. Who is this man, Wainema? That's his brother. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. You see? No kisses for me, huh? You've been saving them, haven't you? Saving them for that stinking Indian. That's not true. <laughs> Look. Will you hear what's been going on? What are you talking about? That Indian in your squaw. Making love right out here in broad daylight. You're That's a liar, about. I'm not a liar. Ask her. I don't have to ask her. Four years, I went to white man's school to learn to become a doctor and to become civilized. You took only four minutes, Mr. Harrison, to make me a savage again. We will meet another time. Is that a threat, Indian? More than a threat. I'm going to kill you. There's your Indian for you. Tries to steal your old wife and threatens to kill your brother. And she's no better if you don't believe me. Brad, I said you was welcome to you. But it just won't work out. You've got a crawl full of hate and you're just going to hang on to it. It's the best you get for riding. Oh, you ain't going to forget what I told you. Or you're going to try, but it's going to be there all the time. Beating at your guts, not never knowing the truth. Get out of here, Brad! I'll get off your land, Liz. But I ain't leaving this town. One more thing I think you ought to know. I'm going to see that every Indian in this town is run back to the reservation. And that includes you, Mrs. Harrison.
Captain. Sure glad to see you. Hello, Travis. What's happening? Uh, we got the makings of a battle on our hands. A fight between Brad Harrison and a young Indian named Lodi's. Got the whole countryside ready to explode. Who's Brad Harrison? He's Les Harrison's brother. Doesn't sound good. I tried to get some facts from Les, but he wouldn't talk. Neither would Lodi's. He carries a lot of weight with all the young bucks in town. Now, where is this Lodi's? Well, he's staying with some of his people at the edge of town. I sure hope you can talk some sense into him. Word is that Brad Harrison's out rounding himself up some gun hands. I well, won't have any trouble finding him in this neck of the woods. Lodis, this is Captain Reining, Arizona Rangers. What do you want? I want to talk with you. I'd like you to tell me about your fight with Brad Harrison. That's between Mr. Harrison and myself. Lodis, I don't think you're the kind of man who would do something you know is wrong just to get even. Why not, Captain? Because I was educated in white man's ways. What about Mr. Harrison? He was born white. Yet he tried to kill me because I'm an Indian. If that's the way it was, we'll see that he answers for it. That's not what you really mean, Captain. You're afraid I'm going to start trouble with a white man. You aren't going to start any trouble, Lodis. Even an Indian has pride. I want you to holster that pride and sit tight. At least until I've talked to Harrison. I want your word. This is my word, Captain. I'm going to sit tight just long enough to get my strength back. Maybe another 24 hours. Maybe less. <laughs> Let's ride over to his brother's place. Already the seed of doubt planted in your mind is growing. Isn't it, Les? What? Oh, no. no of course not, Lonema. Of course not. It's been a long time since you touched the bottle to solve your problem. I can tell. Already the thought of it is eating at your heart. Ah, oh, it's not that. It's... It's just that Brad and that Indian and everything all at once. I know the word of an Indian against that of your brother. Oh, one name, uh, one name, I. Uh... Hello, Captain Ryan. Hello, Les. Hi, Les. Hi, Travis. Come on in. Thank you. How are you, Mrs. Harrison? Fine, thank you, Captain. Hello, Mr. Harrison. I didn't expect you to tomorrow, Captain. I guess you're here to talk about that town charter. Well, that isn't why I'm here. Oh? Can I offer you a drink? No, thanks. Do you have any idea where your brother is? I haven't got the faintest idea. There's trouble brewing in town. Oh? That red-skinned Lodisa's turn it up, I guess, huh? What you come here for, Captain? I told you. I thought you might know where your brother is. And if I did, I want to get him out of town before the trouble starts. You're getting a little high-handed, aren't you? Why chase out my brother? Why not chase out a few of the Redskins? Looks like some of your brother's attitudes rubbed off on you already. If I were you, I'd take stock of myself. Look, mind your own business, Captain. This is a personal fight. Frightening how a small personal enmity or grudge can touch off crowd violence. Two people quarrel and factions form quickly, needing only a small spark to set off a senseless, bloody riot. A nervous and uneasy peace has settled over the town of Wide Ruin. That was Larson. He runs a general store. He said that Brad Harrison rode into town with some gun hands while we were gone. The Indians all scattered, probably to go tell Lodi's. Yeah, take this inside. And drift on over to the saloon. We'll take our money now. I'll give you half now and half when the job is done. You know, this money didn't come easy. 
to be four years in the army to save it up. Did you paying it out just to get rid of some redskins in town? That's right. And if you happen to hit a couple, why don't you fret none? I'd fret if I were you, Harrison. Who are you, mister? Riding. Arizona Rangers. You got no business with me. I have if you figure I'm making trouble. Me make trouble? I'm a peace-loving man, Ranger. Except for Indians. But I guess you brought these men with you to help you keep the peace. Well, you might say something like that, young. You're involving a lot of people in your personal prejudice, Harrison. I'm warning you, don't push it. Do any of you men live here in town? Maybe we're just moving in. Then maybe you just better move out. Fast, Delvin. I've never seen you before. Oh, I've seen your face. You got nothing on me. Besides, we're not causing any harm. Now, then I'll say it straight. So there'll be no misunderstanding. In the eyes of the law, you're a threat to public safety. Now, you can either go peacefully, or you can go to jail. Well, now, ain't he the spunkiest little tin badge you ever did see? I bet you got muscles as hard as railroad ties. Suppose when we find out. One and draw, Delvin. I've heard you're a big man with a gun in your hand, but it'll be murder. I'm not wearing a gun. Harrison, get these men out of town. I wouldn't. Are you looking for trouble, Lodis? Who knows? Well, I'm asking you to not bunch up here in town. You want us to separate so uh, Harrison and his gunslingers can pick us off one at a time? Harrison and his men won't do anything. I'll take care of them. By yourself? I said I'd take care of them. I'll tell your friends to break it up. Captain, we live here. Those men up the street in the saloon don't. We'll break it up just as soon as they leave town. Lodis, I'm playing no favorites. But I'll hold you responsible for these men if they get into trouble, you understand? Harrison and his men have orders to leave town. And until they do, keep off the street. I was afraid I wouldn't find you, Lodis. What's the matter? Take me back to my people. Take me back. Well, why? You said you'd found such happiness. Not now. The poison Leslie's brother put into him. It's worked fast. It isn't right. Your place is here with your husband. I'll talk to him. No. It's too late, I tell you. What's happened to him? All of us. He let one man come into our midst and destroy everything between us and our white brothers. you were here, Brad. I came to tell you I've come to my senses. I know now what I have to do. Well, now you're talking like yourself again, boy. Have a drink. This is uh, Delvin, my brother, my brother Les. Howdy. I knew that squall couldn't stand between blood. Now you're right. Indians killed our pa and uncle. Guess we've got a score to settle. 
And I'm with you. Won't take much to make those redskins turn tail and run. Of course, we might have another battle on our hands. What do you mean, another battle? Ryan sent for the rest of his rangers. He'll be riding in by morning. How do you know? He came out to my place, told me so himself. But we can handle him. By that time, we'll be able to enlist more people around here. I want no part of this fight, Harrison. Not with the rangers coming in. You're not going to let a few lawmen scare you off, are you? If they were regular lawmen, no. But these guys are rough, tough rangers. And you ain't paying enough money to get them on my tail. Come on, let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. I paid you to do a job. Now, either you do it or you give me my money back. Well, I'll just keep it for my trouble coming over. You're yellow. You ain't got the guts of a sick coyote. Yellow? Yeah, I'm yellow. I'm yellow as they come, but I'm alive. I want my money back. I told you it didn't come easy. Well, maybe not, but it's going easy. Now, you look, mister. I got no beef against the Indians. I got nothing against them. You pan out some money? I'm taking it. my fault. What are you doing here, Les? I couldn't stand by and see my town and its people shut up because of a quarrel between two brothers. Thought I could throw a scare into Delvin. Guess I did. Your brother's got a nasty wound. May I see him, Captain? We've got to get that bullet out right away. Push some tables together and boil some water. We haven't got any time to lose. Mr. Harrison's going to be all right, Captain. Can I talk to him? I think a few minutes wouldn't hurt. Brad, this is Captain Rining. I want you to hear what I have to say. Delvin shot you. You'd have died except someone thought you were worth saving. That was Lodi's. The Indian you beat up. Now, don't try to talk. You see, it really doesn't make any difference what color your skin is. I hope you never forget that. And somehow I don't think you ever will. Wanema, I don't know what to say to you, except I've been a fool. I've been a fool also, Les. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me, Forgive you? I'll spend the rest of my life making up this day to you. Thank you. You can all go home. Good night, Captain. Good night, ladies. Good night, Lord Ice. Good night, Les. Banana. We'll hold that meeting tomorrow and talk about the future of the town. I think it has a good future. Let's go home. Good night, Captain. Good night. Good night, Jack. Good night, Les. Good night, Mr. Harrison. Jack Delvin was never caught, but he was never heard of again in the territory. The town settled down. A lot of good citizens settled down with it. This is a
story of 26 men who rode the Arizona Territory. I is the glory of 26 men whose courage helped to build the territory. 26 men who saddled up and then rode out to answer duty's call. 26 men who lived to ride again and fight for the rights and the liberty of all. This is the story of 26 men enforcing law within the territory. Praise be the glory of 26 men who rode the Arizona Territory.